safely behind his own net, or so we think. Alec Bear relentless on the forecheck. And now Norrish finds Elgin Pierce through the neutral zone, and he's onside. Pierce, high slot, rips it, and he scores. Elgin Pierce gained the rush zone, and from the high slot, rifles it under the blocker of Michael Bitzer. And with 7.49 left in the first, a power play goal gives the Steelheads a 1-0 lead. Breakout from behind Scholl's cage. Hard rim on the far wall, all the way up ahead. Found Kyle Shem. Shem knocked off the puck, somehow gains leverage. Finds a man in front, and Elgin Pierce is there again with another backhand shot by Bitzer. And with 5.49 left in the first, Elgin Pierce has two, and the Steelheads have two. It's 2-0. Two 2-0 two is the Steelheads lead. Elgin Pierce scores just about two minutes apart to put the Steelheads on by two. And then another shot from White gets deflected and goes in. And it squeaks by Bitzer, and with 5.07 left in the first, the Steelheads now have a 3-0 lead, and I believe the night of Michael Bitzer will come to an end. And the ace will take over, Adam Carlson. I see it's out of their range. Dan McGinnis, the public address announcer, calls for one minute left in the period. Mulmany lets the puck go to Morasti. His shot got blocked. They're saying it hit the mesh. That's no good. Weslowski with a try. That got stopped. And then we've got all hell breaking loose right now. Weslowski took the shot. And now Kessie comes in, and he rings him down, but Weslowski got a couple of shots in. What I don't get is that the whistle wasn't blown. Weslowski keeps playing because there is no stoppage. There was no whistle blown. Scholl even mentioned, hey, the puck may have hit the mesh. I didn't hear a whistle, so we play on. But Weslowski's given everything he can to Kessie while both linesmen try to separate. And now here comes Josh Helms and Clint Lewis. They both drop the gloves. And now look, Elms comes in with two shots and then Lewis tries to wrestle him down. They both pop right up. Elms now getting the best of him. Lewis comes in with an uppercut but can't land it. Elms now using that reach to his advantage. Gets a couple of rights in. Lewis tied up on the right side trying to go for the rights and now he gets a hold of Elms' helmet and rips it off. Both gentlemen still jockeying. Lewis used the helmet as a weapon at one point with a jab and now both linesmen are going to separate the two of them. Elms will be escorted off the playing surface, as was his captain, as the fight came within the last minute. No need for them to do their time in the box. Exit cleanly, now they do. Here comes Jeff King, he's got a step. He gets by Leibinger, King short-handed with a try, kicked away by Carlson to the steel heads through the neutral zone. Petrick with Dahl with speed. Dahl is onside, short-handed, deferred. Petrick with a try, kick saved by Carlson. Bye. Chris Leibinger accelerates through the neutral zone. He is onside. Leibinger to Polson cutting through. He gets hauled down from behind. And the puck didn't go in. We got a stop with 10.57 left in the second. It remains a 3-0 Steelheads lead. Gentlemen exchange a shove. Here comes Petrick behind the net. Heinrich catches up to him, and then he puts him into the boards again. Puck is center. Dole is there, and he scores. Alexander Dahl from between the hash marks rifles it by Adam Carlson. And with 6.37 left in the second, it is a 4-0. Steelheads lead, couldn't complete it. He gains possession again, rimmed all the way to the opposite side. Weslowski off the blue line, backhands it, he scores! The captain comes off the blue line, turns his slot, and backhands it by Thomas Scholl. And with 4.23 left in the second, the rush are on the board, trailing four to one. They turned it over to Regenovic. Bucks play back up the wall. That's turned over to Bear. Bear down low to Regenovic. Backhands it out in open area. And Scholl got a piece of it before anybody could grab the rebound in front for the rush. Steelheads play it off the glass, back out in the neutral zone we go. Weslowski touched on to Harrington. Polson comes in with a shot from behind, and then Shep knocks into him. And now both gentlemen jockey, we've got a delayed call on the play, and it looks like everybody in the neutral zone, for the most part, has a dance partner, and pleasantries are being exchanged by everyone. It is a conglomeration of bodies in front of the rush penalty box. The linesman feverishly trying to separate it. They are clearly outmatched. Egan Kanzig and Shaquille Morasti in the meantime finally drop the gloves. They're dancing on the other side of the ice, and no one's there to separate it. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. In the meantime, Shemp is being escorted to the penalty box while Morasti and Kanzig exchange punches. Nothing's still coming of it. Kanzig going more for the Greco Roman wrestling, and now Morasti loses his leverage, and Kanzig tackles him down. The skirmish has been separated. Moresti and Kanzik will go to their boxes and join some other teammates. 17.36 left in the game and it remains a four to one. Steelheads lead. Left in the game and it's still four to one. Steelheads. Collision in the neutral zone and now even more skirmishes break out. 
Maraz and Rajanovic had a collision, and then Klotz comes in to defend Rajanovic. And another dog pile. Both of these teams clearly hate each other. Klotz trying to make his voice heard, or rather his fists felt. And now Rajanovic grabs a dance partner, and Petrick grabs him. Wesolowski grabs him, and the chain effect continues. Now Keegan Kanzig, excuse me, Jeff King tries to jump on the back of Klotz. He's being restrained by the head referee. And it looks like finally we have some form of order restored. One of the poor linesmen is on the ice with one of the combatants, rather two of them. And now Klotz and Mraz exchange pleasantries as Mraz is now showboating to the crowd. And now going after him on the sequence is Cedric Mulvaney. And now Regenovic grabs King and we have completely lost order. Oh, Cedric Molman, he showed Mitch Mraz. You're not gonna get away with that in my building. And now Mraz comes in with a couple of late shots with Molman down. And I believe there is blood on the ice. Molman is being sat on by the linesman and Mraz is just taking shot after shot. Mraz is a tough customer, but he's completely defenseless. Mraz bleeding from the sequence. That was the blood. Pass got deflected, barely contained on the blue line by Glukowski. Down low, Petrick centered, has a man, they score. It's a power play goal, Brad McClure. And now there's more showboating from Kessie, and then Alec Bear comes in, and both gentlemen hit the ice. Husky and Reed Petrick, a five minute major power play goal at 5.56 of the period. Another shot in the neutral zone. We have a downed player on the ice and now another fight breaking out. Rajenovic and Calderon are going at it and Rajenovic's absolutely hammering him and both gentlemen hit the turf. And now another fight breaking out. Elgin Pierce and Brandon Fade going at it. Adam Carlson cheering on his teammate and we have completely lost order in this hockey game. When we return, five and a half minutes left in the game. Wait a second, folks. We've got more post whistle shenanigans here. Another conglomeration as Heinrich tried to jump in as well, but he is immediately wrestled down by the linesman. Just pushing and shoving at this point. And a rugby scrum, if you will, behind the net. No punches have been thrown. Face off. One by the Steelheads. Petrick creeps in, down Main Street, hands off to McClure near a wall. Back for Petrick at the high slot. Petrick hands off, Glukowski creeps in, rifles a shot and he scores. It's a five on three power play goal. Nolan Glukowski off the back bar. And with 4.04 left in the game, it's a 6-1 Steelheads lead. 